The Bas de Apache National Wildlife Refuge can be found about 90 miles or a little more south of the city of Albuquerque, New Mexico. The 57,000 acre plus refuge is along the Rio Grande River and is a major stopover for migrating waterfall. And for us, Gloria and Tom, it made for a great overall birding destination. The preserve has several hiking trails, and I think Gloria and I traveled most of them. And the preserve has a lot more wildlife than just birds. And it even has a cycling trail, which we also rode. But the real stars at Baste Apache are the sand hill cranes, over 10,000 of them. And the geese, over 20,000 snow geese and Ross's geese, can be found at Baste Apache from late November through late February. Both the geese and the cranes spend most of their days out in the food plots that the Fish and Wildlife Service has maintained for them. As the sun begins to set, the birds leave the food plots for the safety of the flooded fields that are actually like shallow ponds, groups, sometimes three, four at a time, sometimes one or two, and sometimes maybe half a dozen or a dozen. These cranes are all coming in to spend the night on a pond that was just about two miles from our campground. But no geese, just the cranes. As the sun dips below the horizon, they settle in for the night, kind of a crane's cocktail hour. Before sunup, we were back at the pond. Still lots of cranes, but no geese. What's that coming? Here they come. En masse. <coughs> And here came the geese, thousands of them. Turns out this was the biggest group that we had fly in the whole nine days we were there. I was at this pool, uh, I think, about seven times during our stay at Boss, and each morning would be the same thing. The cranes would be on the pool, and then a little later in would come the geese. I wouldn't set my watch by the, the time of the geese arrival, but uh, if you did, you'd be off 10, maybe 15 minutes once in a while. I sincerely hope that as a viewer, you're getting a true sense of just how chaotic these scenes are each morning. After the geese have landed, they kind of just mill around, maybe get a drink of water, sometimes uh, nibble on a little snack, but they just kind of just hang around there for a while. Sometimes when I'm watching an individual crane, it seems like they're a little bit confused about all this uh, chaos that's going on around them.
a lot of the cranes, uh, they seem to be uh, engaging in some conversation. Other cranes, uh, they just seem to be doing some preening. Other cranes seem to be having a early morning snack. Other cranes seem to be doing uh, some dancing, perhaps uh, practicing for the uh, upcoming mating season. And other cranes, well, they just seem to be sleeping in. For their part, the geese seem to be doing the same thing as the cranes. Now, the big difference is the chatter never stops. After a time, usually once the sun is really uh, starting to get up over the horizon, they start walking towards the north end of the pond. About this time, they see small groups of cranes take off and head for the food plots. The geese, they left the pond on their own timeline. Not quite sure what these uh, cranes are doing here, but uh, they're interesting to watch. So as I was saying about the uh, geese leaving the ponds, they, uh, they just seem to leave in waves of a couple hundred at a time, sometimes maybe a, a thousand at a time. But no rhyme or reason as to why. That's the way it was almost every day at the pond, except one. This particular morning, all of the geese left at one time. They left in unison. This is what's known as a blast-off. It's something that the birders are all hoping to see. We found out later on that the cause of this blast-off was an eagle flying overhead. The eagle put all of the uh, geese into a frenzy, but it didn't phase the cranes. The geese did a couple laps around the pond and they just returned back. They had barely settled in when it happened all over again. So it was a couple laps around the ponds and they're back down again. After the geese and the cranes leave, we turn our attention to other birds. 
like these, what we think are Wilson snipes. And there are plenty of ducks that bosk, as can be witnessed by all of these mallards with a few northern pintails mixed in. Though not in the numbers of other waterfowl, northern shovelers can be found quite readily. Quail were quite common also, like this female uh, gambles quail right here. We saw them mostly around the campground and at the visitor center. They typically don't stay in one spot very long. Here I got a little video of a Says Phoebe. We didn't see a lot of deer while we were in Bosk, but uh, we did find these uh, this group of mule deer uh, crossing uh, across the road and out into the open uh, across this uh, flooded uh, wetland right here. And great blue heron were uh, pretty much a daily occurrence for us. One day while we were driving on the uh, auto loop, uh, we found um, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Service were doing a prescribed burn in this area of the road. So besides our star birds of uh, sandhill cranes, uh, snow geese, and Ross's grease, there's plenty more to do at Baste Apache. Uh, we enjoyed our hiking there. Uh, we did m most of the trails. But there were a lot of other birds, and I'll uh, we'll finish this out with some still shots that I got while we were in Baste Apache.